walks like an angel, talks like an angel, but I got by. You're the devil in disguise. Oh, yes, you are. Good afternoon from Yami BTV. Wishing you all well, sending plenty of love your way as usual and have a great life. We've just had, and as promised, um, I deliver that fight in Tenerife with Kevin Lane. Now, look, many questions. Um, Vinny, especially this one's a good one, though, and five others have, have also mentioned this feature that when you've actually got a sweet face, a baby face, a good-looking face, a pretty boy face, do people think that they can just take the piss out of you and have it with you or underestimate you and maybe think that you might not be what everybody says you are and think they can see right through you and maybe try and test you? First things first answering the questions about loyalty and most of those men um, from the category A's who I had um, special time with that I love very, very dearly. It was confusing as we fed on Miami B at times for me because you don't know what side to be on. There were some that I love more than others. In the jungle, it is a different life and different rules to living outside. What I am saying is when change comes, when you're not a criminal no more, you no longer um, are living by the jungle rules, so to speak, um, outside, it is completely different for me now. Making amends, transitioning away from that life where it looks, you know, the politics and everything, some of them will go on forever and ever. Um, the question, questions being asked, but Yami, you're close to this one and close to that one, but he's got beef with that one and that one. In the jungle, it could have mattered to me in the case. It's not going to matter to me at this stage in my life, but it doesn't mean that I don't love everybody in the same way as I did before. But I'm not living by the rules of the jungle no more. Um, I'm living by what I'm living to and trying to achieve to now, which is a law-abiding, upright member of the community. All right, so what happened between him and him, that will probably go on for a lifetime and them and them. He didn't like him, he didn't like them. We saw how confusing it was for me in there. It's not my baggage to carry out here. And after all, if I was choosing sides out here and getting in the mix in the same way that I did in the jungle, it could have possible consequences for me. So my way is that it was all in the past for my part in it, right? But today, um, the way that I live and, and like being the person that I am in later life, it doesn't really, really interest me and I will not be getting involved in other people's personal spats. During that life, um, when serious crimes involved, alleged ones, so-called ones, etc., etc., um, that's the, this is the kind of stuff that it brings about forever and a day till the end of time. They're always going to be hatred and things. Some people reason it out in the end and come together and realise it's all. Some things can never be mended. So my part answering those questions is that I am at a different stage in life now, if you get what I mean. So the baby face stuff, the pretty boy stuff, I went through that as well. I remember once um, when I was in Wandsworth, um, Build a bomb was there. Um, Chrissy Long. I think this um, Greek geezer called um, Chris Kiriapu. Well, I don't remember if some of you remember him, right? But there was loads of people around at that time, like I told you in the early 80s. And this big geezer come up to me. Um, I was bigger than me, but I was still a cheeky, cheeky chappy, right? And I answered back. And he goes, do you want to come in here? And all that. But it looked like he was going to be a handful. But I really didn't care. I said to him, all right, come in. And when we went in the cell, right, he was standing over me. Um... And he went like that. You don't really want to fight me. He goes, I don't want to hit you anyway. Your face is too pretty. I goes, what are you trying to say? Like that kind of stuff. So sometimes having a sweet boy face or whatever, it might get you out of a bit of trouble. But also, like you said, Vin, it can cause you, um, it can cause people to look from a distance and think, I mm, don't like him. He's just too thing and all that. And the rumours in the category A's, it's just a joke. Don't tell Kevin Lane this. Uh, but behind the scenes, they used to say that Kevin Lane was like Gary Stretch. But I take that as a compliment because after all, Gary Stretch was a bit of a pretty boy in his heyday, if you get what I mean. But that's what they used to say. I don't think they said it to Kevin Lane's face, but that was just one of the um, tongue, -in tongue in cheek talks behind the scenes. Now, as promised, that bit in Tenerife, right? Kevin Lane fact was in Tenerife before he got put away on that life sentence, right? He had um, interactions with John Palmer, right? They might have been deeper or smaller. I don't know. I haven't asked. The one thing is definite that 
during that time Kevin was over there, the John Goldfinger Palmer uh, put up family, people and that kind of stuff in villas and paid for it. And that. So they were close before that incident where they met up in prison later on further down the line with this story that I described yesterday. Right, so that that's why it would have been that relationship comes from the out. But the last time they saw each other, because they never saw each other again, because a geezer called Eric Bristol, imagine that, not the darts player, <laughs> but a big big guy, massive geezer from East London. I knew him, but he, he was kind of a cool geezer. I saw him in Swellside um, in the nineties. Yeah. Um, I think he had a brother called Trevor and I got on well with Trevor. Trevor was a good geezer, right? So I'm telling this story because I know that it happened and, you know, just, it, the fights um, happened during that life and all that. So apparently, allegedly, Eric Bristow was working out in Tenerife as well. Like I said, a massive geezer, right? Kevin Lane was out there. Kevin Lane was in a buggy or something and he pulled up and they set eyes on each other. Kevin had people around him at that time as well. But I think Eric Bristow had a stall or a shop or something that he was minding or something of that nature. Straight away, they crossed eyes and they didn't like each other. Or rather, Eric Bristow didn't like Kevin Lane in some kind of way. It happens sometimes on first meets, right? So he's turned around. He goes, listen, mate, look, just part that bit round there or whatever, whatever the altercation was, right? Um, I'm not going to go too deep into that bit. Um, he says, listen, so they're having word by mouth confrontation, you know, tit for tat. And Kevin Lane goes, well, what's the problem? Like, what do you think? And, the, and he goes, listen, Eric Bristow said to him, listen, you either listen to what I say or we can take it out there around the back, if you like. Kevin Lane goes, yeah, all right, then we can do whatever you want to do, wherever you want to do it, at any time or any place, right? So the front down the gauntlet, as Slaney would say. So Eric Bristow has come out of the shop and basically he might have thrown a big right hand, he missed. Kevin, fast hands, lightning quick, Kevin Lane, rat-a-tat-tat-tat-tat-tat. Um, he didn't get much chance to answer back, Eric Bristow, but he fell into the stall, right? So things fell on the floor and all that, but he didn't hit the deck, right? So he comes pushing back out, the wrestling comes in, Kev's trying to think about that. But this all comes about by the way Kevin looks. And it's a fact, Vinny, you know, it is a feature in that life, but it also gets you a lot of results as well. So it's continued for a little while, this fight. Um, Eric's probably having to go back, but really Kevin's out punching him, if you get what I mean, right? Many people watching this fight. So the police are coming, right? Right, so whatever, someone's made a call. Um, Kevin has jumped into a car, allegedly, right? Someone told me. And he's got all blood all over him, covered in claret. So he's driving through cauldrons where police are blocking off roads, but he's with a couple of people. I don't know who they was. Um, but they, they've kind of covered and when they would get back going through um, the cold where the police were blocking off, they let them straight through. And the only thing is, for some reason, he got, um, I can't remember the name of it, but he got requested or thrown out from Tenerife to go back um, to England, maybe for the case or whatever. I don't know. I haven't checked in or nothing. I'm just telling you this story. So they never got to see each other again, Palmer, until that time in the category A's or one of those times in the category A's when Goldfinger Palmer was doing the round. So that's how that went. Sending loads of love.